to an animation on the graphing of the sine function, the goal of the video is to observe how a change in the values of a, b, c, and d affect the graph of the sine function in this form. And sometimes it's written in this form as well. Let's do a quick review. If we have the sine function in this form, remember the absolute value of a is the amplitude, a creates what's called a vertical stretch or compression. 2 pi divided by b will give us the period of the sine function. b creates a horizontal stretch or compression. And c creates a vertical shift up or down. If c is positive, it's up. If c is negative, it's down. And lastly, d creates a horizontal shift left or right. And this is also called phase shift. And if we see x minus d, the shift will be d units to the right. If we see x plus d, it will be d units to the left. And this is also true for the cosine function. Let's take a look at this animation. First we'll observe a change in a. As a increases, you can see it's a vertical stretch which changes our amplitude. As we see a decrease less than 1, this will be a vertical compression, as we see here. Then notice as soon as A turns negative, the function is reflected across the x-axis. So even though when A is negative 1, for example, our amplitude is still 1, but it is a reflection across the x-axis. Okay, now let's take a look at what happens when we change the value of b. Remember the period is 2 pi divided by b. So as we increase b, you can see we have a change in the period, or you could also think of it as a horizontal compression. And when b is less than 1, greater than 0, you can see we have a horizontal stretch. of our sine function. Next, let's take a look at what happens when we change the value of c. And we see it's a vertical shift up if c is positive, or down if c is negative. Next, let's take a look at what happens when we change the value of d. Remember, D should be a horizontal shift left or right. Notice when we see X minus 1, it's shifted one unit to the right. And when we see X plus a value, the shift is actually to the left. So what happens is if we change all these values at the same time, like so, we can get some very interesting looking graphs that resemble the sine and cosine functions based upon the type of transformations that have occurred. So in the next couple of videos, we'll be working with these transformations, either graphing them or trying to find the equations of a given graph in this form. I hope you found this illustration helpful. Thank you and have a good day.